Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. I have Anand with me today to talk about what's happening in the world of AI. I recently did a video about that and about uh, how the market seems to be a little nervous. Not the market, I would say. Investors are still gung-ho about AI and AI debt. But market uh, players, seniors in the market, are a little worried about the amount of debt these companies are taking on and does it make sense and the dangers in this, pitfalls in this. Comparing newbies like uh, OpenAI and uh, old war horses like Google, I thought we can draw a little bit of contrast and exp have Anand explain to us why we should be careful when we are looking at AI as a purely AI play. The first thing is that uh, yesterday ChatGPT announced a huge deal with Amazon where they will be several billion dollars worth of uh, trout space of Amazon that uh, ChatGPT will be using. So, whereas uh, you should know that Amazon is the major backer of uh, Anthropy, which is the biggest rival of uh, ChatGPT. Yeah, open air. And Google is also backing Anthropy. While this is going on, ChatGPT has announced today that for all Indian users, one version lower than the best version is free for one year. So ChatGPT did unleash its spending bits in India. And uh, ChatGPT now is saying, use ChatGPT for one year. When ChatGPT launched its bots about a uh, couple of years back, I think for the first time, I don't remember the time, and Google, though it had its spots about ready for a long time, for ethical reasons, had not launched it. And so Google was forced to join the play and its board made several mistakes. So people thrashed Google and Google dropped further. Unlike the chat GPTs and Amazons of the world, Google has a completely integrated, vertically integrated bank. It uh, has its own cloud services first. It has its own ecosystem and uh, there are several ways where it can work around its AI and charge you for it. I, I have seen you using AI in your emails and uh, you perfecting it and you charge for it. So there are many ways with which Google is working AI into your system and you are paying for it without you realizing that you are paying for it. And all this is affecting, uh, is pointing towards Google's record revenues. And as feared, Google's uh, search business has not collapsed, right? ChatGPT has not taken away a big portion of it. In fact, if you search through Google now, you get a AI view first, where you can read whether what you want you searched about. And then it gives you substantial information with what Wikipedia would do. And then you don't, unless you want detailed inflation, information, you go click at the links which are below. But knowing the human mind as it is, most people will be very happy with the AI view and move away with it. So there's a Google search, there's an AI view, and then there are links that come up. So if you've noticed it for the last one year, Google has been giving you that AI view over you for free. So it's basically what Google has done is built up defenses. It means that I have not used Binge, but if you use Binge, then ChatGPT can do the same thing in Microsoft. But other than that, I don't see any major things that ChatGPT has run away with. ChatGPT, of course, was used to do college essays and other things, but the immediate, the competitive ecosystem made sure that a yeah, software was there to find out an AI finder. Basically, find out which articles were written by AI and which articles were not written by AI. So at this point of time, it looks very difficult for me to find out how the world is going to justify the kind of investments etc. being poured in, especially in data farms and other things. AI does have good applications. A lot of these routine menial jobs, clerical jobs may disappear. If you, if I can compare something in India, 
it's like typists. There's a government job of typists. There are no typists now. The man has to send his email by himself. And Google has made it easier for a draft or for an email. You, you can tell Google what you want to reply. And Google will draft the reply. If you are not happy with it, you can tweak it wrong. Or you can ask for Google for a more polite or a more tougher line. So Google has various options. Suppose that you have received an email and you want to reply to somebody. Google will do the grunt work. Now this is something which is going to really affect millions. Because in India many of them are already on Gmail. When I'm on Gmail, I'm not going to go out and use chat GPT. Then Google Assistant is ready there. This is what I think is vertical integration. Is there anything more to this vertical integration you are talking about? Um, vertical integration also includes the fact that Google is able to do end-to-end -end solution in the AI ecosystem. They can create the hardware. They have the software, which is like the Gemini. They have their own chips. And uh, now they have, like Anand said, the ecosystem to implement it. So unlike um, ChatGPT, which requires an ecosystem for it to be injected into, Google already has an ecosystem. They have been for years working on the quantum processor. We spoke about Sundar Pichai and the Widow processor. And uh, the way it's playing out, integration of AI is where the money is to be made. AI per se, it's just like, you know, like a micro motor or like a bulb when it was invented, when it came into fruition. But how this bulb or this like micro motor or whatever you want to say is going to be used as a cog in the entire scheme of things, like a gear, is what is important. That's what Anand's driving in. He's saying that, yes, you have AI, chat GPT, great, I'm happy for you. But how is this AI going to be coming to me in different ways and forms? Because we have moved away from the days of desktop computing. We are fast moving away from the days of mobile computing and even mobile phones. And we're getting more and more into a space where Computing will be there everywhere around us from small computing powers, you know, like from light switches and automation to long, large complex things like data analysis and data analytics. So from one end to the other, computers are going to be integrated in every shape and form. And Google already is a key player in this kind of integration is what Anand is trying to say. And uh, that's where their major strength is. And going we forward... We have one thing. They, both Amazon and Google have GPUs now, which are fabricated and which are on use. Everybody is talking of the NVIDIA chips. Both Amazon and Google have chips which they are using in their clouds. And there is going to be quantum. The Anthropy deal was all about using the GPUs of, of Amazon and Google. There is also another thing that uh, OpenAI has restructured and said it's for profit now. And... Uh, Microsoft owns 27% of uh, OpenAI. And in all this, there's a dark horse of Elon Musk, who has raised a lot of money and who's getting ready. So I do not know where this will end. There are a lot of competing players. It reminds me of the time when Warren Buffett said that uh, there were more than 300 car makers. Finally, three survived. I am just waiting to see who will survive in this and then pick up the winner. Because it's very difficult at this time to pick out who is the winner and who is the loser at this point of time. So if you get heavily involved and think a guy is a winner and he turns out to be a loser, as an investor, you will lose your money and you will lose your capital big time. So let's wait for the winners to emerge and then do it. Along with it, there is news that NVIDIA's founder sold $1 billion of his stock and collected some cash. Obviously, it's become a $5 trillion market cap company, and there's a lot of demand for his stock. So he wouldn't have sold a lot of his stake for a billion dollars. But anyway, one thing is sure, he's a winner. He's encashed a billion and kept it away separately away from the group. Thank you for watching Be Rich. I hope you liked the information we shared with you. Thank you for watching Be Rich, as Anand said, and we'll catch you again tomorrow. Yeah.